All right, so hi guys. In this video, I'd like to caution you about Wall Street's doom and gloom scam and how this is destroying your wealth creation. So first, let me tell you the good news and then I'll tell you the bad news and we're going to end off with good news again. The good news is that the stock market is one of the best places for you to build your wealth and anyone can do it. So if your goal is to be financially free from the red race in the near future, if your goal is to retire comfortably, the stock market can get you there, even without much financial skills. For example, if you just bought the S&P 500 ETF or the Nasdaq ETF or the Dow Jones ETF, all you got to do is to just stay invested over time and you will do really, really well. So for example, take a look at the last five years. You can see that over the last five years, if you just invested in the S&P 500 ETF, the SPY, you would have gotten a total return of 71 0.85%. This is even after the big crash that the market went through last year, during the bear market last year, you're still up 71% for the last five years. So that is an annualized return of 11.4% per year. Now, if you invested in a NASDAQ ETF, you'll be up 104% over the last five years. Again, even after taking into account that big bear market last year giving you an annualized return of 15.39% per year. Now, some people would say, but that's just over five years. How about long term? You know, do you still get good results? Well, let's, let's take a look. Well, over a 10 year period, you can see the S&P 500 returns 12% on average a year. And the NASDAQ returns 17% returns per annum. And again, this is over the last 10 years, even after taking into account that bear market in 2022 and the bear market in 2020. So in other words, if you just ride through these bear markets, these ups and downs, you're still getting very good returns on average a year. Now, some would say, hey, how about going further back? How about the dot-com crash? How about the financial crisis? What if I went through all that? You'd still be doing pretty well, right? So let's take a look at the last 30 years from 1993 to 2023, even taking into account the dot-com crash, the great financial crisis, the COVID 2020 crash, and last year 2022 crash, even with four big crashes, investing in the S&P, you'll be up 1,400% over 30 years. If you analyze it, that's about 9.46% a year. Now, I can't show you the NASDAQ ETF because that ETF did not exist 30 years ago. So the point is that if you stayed invested for the last 30 years through the ups and downs with four big bear markets, you're still getting a 9.46% annualized return. And you can see in the last 10 years, it was over 12% return. So not only does the market keep going up in the long run, but it goes up faster and faster and faster. So what's the reason? Now, some people say, hey, it's because of the Fed pumping money into the system. That's not true. It's because earnings, corporate earnings, are growing faster today than they did 30 years ago because of technology. So let me give you a very simple example. If you think about it, many years ago, it took a long time for a company to hit a million subscribers, but now it takes a matter of days. For example, in 1999, when Netflix launched, it took three and a half years to reach a million users. And then in 2024, when Facebook started, it took 10 months to reach a million users. Now, ChatGPT takes five days to reach a million users. So because of productivity and technology, it takes faster and faster for companies to reach more customers and to generate more profits. And that's why the market not only goes up in the long run, but it's going up at a faster and faster pace. So moving forward, if you simply invest in the S&P 500 ETF and you just hold it through the ups and downs, then it's reasonable to uh, expect a return of 12% on average a year. So what does that mean? That means, for example, if you invested $500 a month, you let it compound, you reach a million dollars in 26 years. And for most people, they'll be able to retire with at least a million dollars. Now, if you invested $1,000 a month, that would compound to close to $2 million in 26 years. Now, the best part is that anyone can do this. It takes zero brains and zero skills to do this.
But some people would say, Adam, I don't want to wait 26 years to hit a million dollars or wait 26 years to hit two million dollars. I want to achieve this a lot faster. So if you want to achieve this a lot faster, you want to get much higher than 12% returns, you want to get like 18, 25, 30% returns, then you got to have the skills of how to pick the top 1% of companies in the world. You have to learn how to buy them when they are undervalued. And that's what we teach in our value momentum investing courses. That's what I do in my investing masterclasses. And that's what people watch me do live through my ultimate investors uh, playbook. Again, even if you don't have any of my skills, you should still be able to retire comfortably with a few million dollars if you simply buy the index and you hold it through the ups and downs. Now, you may be wondering, if this is so simple, why doesn't everyone do this? Why doesn't everyone retire a multimillionaire? What's stopping people? So let me tell you the bad news. The bad news is that research has found that more than 70% of retail investors lose money in the stock market, even though the market always goes up. I mean, that's insane, right? And even the 30% of retail investors that make money, they make half of the index returns, where the index is returning 11 to 12% a year, the average investor who makes money only makes four or 5%. So why? What is stopping most people from building their wealth in the stock market? And in fact, what is causing people to lose their money in the stock market? The culprit is Wall Street. The bastards. That's right. It's Wall Street's doom and gloom scam. Telling you every year that the end is near, we're all gonna die. And they scare you shitless and they scare you out of the market. So they can make all the money and not you. So let's take a look at this doom and gloom racket they've got going on. Now, if you read all the financial news, now I read all the financial news every year, every day, for entertainment purposes to see how they manipulate the poor investor. And you will notice something interesting, that in general, the financial media is very bearish biased. They are very negative. Not, not just this year, not just last year, but every year. And what you find is that 8 out of 10 financial news articles are negative. They'll talk about recessions and market crashes and meltdowns and, and so on and so forth, right? And the same thing with market analysts and so-called financial gurus. You find that 7 out of 10 of them are negative. Again, not this year, not last year, but every single year. On the other hand, this is the opposite of what actually happens in the stock markets. Again, if you take a look at the stock markets over the last 95 years, for example, you can see that, yep, there are years the market went up, there are years the market goes down. Now, you never know which years it will go up, which years it will go down until after the fact. It's completely random. It's like tossing a dice. But there are people out there who say, they oh, predicted the last crash. Yeah, but they predicted 20 of the last three crashes, if you know what I mean, okay? Now, if you take a look at it statistically in the, in the last 95 years, there were 73 years that ended with a gain. These are all the years which are highlighted over here. And there were 22 years that ended with a loss or a down year, which is 23% of the time. So what this means is that on any given year, the chance of the market going up is 76% on any given year. So at the start of every year, there's a 76% chance it's going to go up but the financial media and financial analysts, seven out of 10 of them say it's going to go down. So why are financial news and analysts negative buyers? Very simple, because bad news sells. Bad news gets more views, gets more attention. That's why most YouTube videos are negative. Then they get more views, they get more clicks. Really simple. And sadly, that's how human beings are wired. Even if you read Everyday news, it tends to be more negative, right? If you came up with a news article that said the Lee family went to the beach, they had a wonderful time, the family bonded, who's going to read that article? But if you say that the Lee family got murdered on the beach by gunmen, that gets a lot of views. So that incentivizes the financial media to always tell you that there's going to be a recession, there's going to be a meltdown, that the market's going to crash. Then you're going to read that news. It's really simple. Not that it's going to happen, okay? Second reason why they're negative buys is because 
research shows that human beings are hardwired to think that negativity sounds smarter. That's right. So there is a perception in the world that bearish investors or pessimistic investors or analysts are more analytical and more risk adverse. They are smarter. They are more intellectual. Whereas bullish analysts who say the market is going to go up like, like Tom Lee, for example, or like Adam Koo, they are more emotional, they are irresponsible, and they are impulsive, right? So bears are often projected to be smarter than the bulls. But you realize that at the end of the day, it's the bulls that get rich and the bears that end up poor all the time. And I'll show you statistics and facts to back up that claim. So you've got to understand that because of this, the financial media financial gurus and analysts are incentivized towards negative news and bearish calls. Like this guy over here, I mean, I call them the doomsday pawn stars like Robert Kiyosaki and Jer Jeremy Grantham. These are the doomsday pawn stars, right? You know, most of the time, they're always very negative. Or that guy called Mark Faber, he's called Dr. Dr. Doom, right? So they tend to very often make bearish uh, comments. Why? Because think about it, right? If the market goes up, these gurus still make money, right? Now, I mentioned before that people like Jeremy Grantham, although he says that the market is going to crash, but he's buying stock. He's buying stock. So one hand, he tells you we're going to die. On the other hand, he's buying shares, okay? So you got to understand that these people, they never follow their own advice. Okay, so if the market goes up, they win because they are making money and at the same time, they are saying that the downside has not happened yet. It's coming, it's coming, not yet, not yet, coming soon, not yet. But if the market indeed goes down, which it does once in a while, then they can start to cross and say, see, I told you so, see, I was right. So hits, I win, tails, you lose. Of course, an another doomsday porn star is Robert Kiyosaki, who predicted a crash eight times in the last 12 years, right? So with all these gurus predicting crashes and meltdown and disaster, let me ask you this question. Who gets hurt in the end? They? No. Me? No. You. It's the ordinary investors who are trying to save for retirement, who are trying to retire comfortably, who are trying to be financially free, they get hurt in the end. Why? Because all this doom and gloom news discourage, discourages them from sticking to their investment plans and from staying in the markets. As a result, many of them, they don't dare to even start investing. They keep staying in cash, hoping that, oh, the crash is coming, the crash is coming, and they never get started investing. Or because of that, they jump in and out of markets, jumping out, anticipating a crash is coming that, that never comes. So even if it does come, they never get back in. It flies up and they never get in eventually. Or, or worse, during a bear market, when the market drops, they read all this doom and gloom news. They get so scared that it's going to go even lower that they sell right at the bottom or near the bottom that disseminates their portfolio, market goes up and they lock in their losses. So remember, these doomsday profits are not your friends. And that's why I tell all my students to ignore market predictions. It's not that the market won't go down. Of course the market will go down. The market will go down once in a while. The market goes through corrections. It goes through bear markets. It's part of the game. But if you're holding on to fundamentally good businesses that grow in value every single year, these are the top 1% of companies, or you hold on to the index ETFs, through the ups and downs, it doesn't matter. Any drop is temporary. It will always rebound high eventually. And as long as you stay invested, you can see that even with major bear markets, you're still getting 11 to 12% annual returns without any brains. And of course, if you learn my skills of picking only very good companies, you could double or even triple that on certain years going forward. Now, take a look at this. In the last 14 years, the S&P 500 gained 500%. Now, this is even after the bear market crash last year. Even with the crash, it's still up 500%. Even after the COVID crash, it's still up 500%. But many investors over 14 years lost money. 70% lost money, and those that made money made less than 500%. Why? Because of all this 
negative doom and gloom news, right? Again, take a look from 2009. Look at all the news in the media over here. In October 2009, Dow Jones will fall to 6,003 by year end. Over here, a market forecast that says take cover. Over here, Dow could crash to 3,000. Over here, Europe debt defaults are poised to rattle stocks. 87% risk of stock crash by year end. The last time stocks were this expensive was the tech bubble. Stocks and bonds will crash soon. Jim Rogers says, the worst crash in our lifetime is coming. Yeah, he's been saying that for the last 20 years, right? Here comes the biggest stock market crash in a generation. Why markets are still heading for a crash? Are you prepared for a stock market crash? Some investors are making the biggest bet against the market nine years. Every freaking year, they say the market is going to crash. Of course, once in a while it does, and they say, I told you so. But if it doesn't, they say, well... It's coming soon. By the meantime, they are making money and you are not. Now, if you are afraid of the market going low in the short term, don't be. Because like I keep saying that if you're holding the index or you're holding good companies, any drop is temporary. And it you didn't lose anything, right? The loss is psychological. You, you did not lose shit unless you choose to sell and lock in the loss. But if you hold it through the ups and downs, you always come out a winner. Right? And here's an interesting fact. If you look at the last 10 years, for example, even if you were so unlucky that you bought right at the top before a crash, you are still better off than people who never got started at all. Right? If you were the world's unluckiest person and you bought the stock market at the top, which was very bad timing, you bought here right before it crashed. 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 If you just do that over time, you are still better off than someone who held cash over the long run. So remember that the longer you hold in cold cash, the more risky it becomes because over the long run, you are guaranteed to lose wealth from inflation, from the devaluation of currency. But the longer you hold on to stocks, good companies, or the index, not lousy companies, the safer it becomes because good companies and the index, they always, always go high over time. So remember that far more money has been lost by investors preparing for corrections, trying to anticipate corrections, than has been lost in the corrections themselves. So I keep saying that it is not the stock crashes that make you lose money. It is the fear of the stock crash that makes you do dumb shit and it's doing the dumb shit that is what makes you lose money. So what's the dumb shit that people do? The dumb shit that they do is that they stay out of the markets and never grow their wealth or they sell in panic at the worst possible time. Now take a look at this chart. This shows you uh, clients of TD Ameritrade, one of the largest brokers in the US that clients of TD Ameritrade, not just that broker, but most brokers, they were net sellers in December of last year. So think about it. A lot of retail investors, they sold their stock in December last year, near the bottom. And now the market's going up without them. Will they get back in again? Of course not, because everyone is saying it's going to crash again. So by the time they get back in, it's never. Or they may get back in at the top. And that's why they will never be able to to, to, to build their wealth, right? And the last time they got out of the markets was in March 2020, which was the bottom of the dot-com crash. So every time retail investors get scared out of the markets, the market tends to be near bottom and it goes up without them. And that's why Bernard Baruch, yeah, he said this many years ago. He said, the main purpose of the stock market is to make fools of as many men as possible. Now, again, to be fair, it's not the stock market that's making a fool of you. It's these doomsday profits. So if you ignore them and stay invested in the markets, you'll be the one that's going to come out a winner. So always remember to stick to your investment plans. Only invest in the top 1% of companies in the world that pass my strict criteria, which you learn in my investing courses. We only buy companies that have consistent growth in sales, revenue and cash flow, wide economic modes, conservative debt levels, high return on capital, stay invested, ignore the doom and gloom headlines, ignore these um, you know, bearish gurus, 
and you will do really, really well in your life. Hope this has been useful and I'll see you guys in the next video. If you want to catch my latest videos, click on the subscribe button right now. Click on the bell so you get instant notifications once I upload my latest video. If you want to check out my online courses, go to piranaprofits.com. We're going to learn how to invest and how to trade the financial markets and create an income from all around the world. If you want to join my live Wealth Academy program, go on to wealthacademyglobal.com and find out more about how you can learn investing and trading live online. This is Adam Koo and may the markets be with you.